Libra, it's me, Stormy, and here's your horoscope for October 2018, and happy birthday, Libra. Man, it's birthday month. It's turn up time. This is a fresh new year. We've got a new moon happening in your sign. This is the opportunity for you to come out differently, but really, even though it's birthday time, and that is the hot and fresh out of the oven this month, you know, the fresh news, we've also got Venus going retrograde, and that's some pretty, pretty big ticket information for you as well. Now, Venus is not only going retrograde, but Venus is your ruling sign going retrograde at your birthday time in your second house. So what is this is telling us are we saying you know Libra don't go out there and spend all your birthday money on one big thing yes that is exactly what I'm telling you <laughs> All right, when Venus is going retrograde for all of us Venus is our planet of romance of uh, money of harmony, of sensuality, but also self-esteem, esteem, value, the things that we have value, your talents that you may or not be, may or may not be using. Now, Venus is going retrograde in the sign of Scorpio, which means she's going to be lighting up your second house space. So in a retrograde, what we're going to do is relook at, rethink, re-edit, reconsider, revise, reconnect, right? So what you're going to be looking over are things in the second house. Now, the very first thing I think of when I think of the second house for you, especially here at birthday time, is self-esteem. How do you value you? Do you value you? Now, Venus in Scorpio can actually be a very quiet retrograde. It can be very, very private. You may feel like you need a lot more private time. You may also feel like your self-esteem is taking a hit. You could feel really doubtful because it's almost like this retrograde is bringing up all this ick from the past or this ick from the depths of you so you can say, that doesn't serve me anymore. That's not a part of my world anymore. It's okay for me to release and let go of that. During a retrograde, we're trying to find the value, find the love, but we've got to do it by sorting out which doesn't belong there. Now, the other thing we look at in that second house space is, of course, finances, your money. Do you need to relook at your budget during this time, right? Here's another thing I think of when I think of finance in the second house for you. Do you have things that need to be sold. And here's the deal, during a retrograde, especially Venus retrograde, I never suggest that people make big ticket purchases, but what can happen is that you need to sell something and this is when someone's ready to buy, or you need to buy something and someone has marked the price down so considerably that this is actually the time to be able to do it. So you have to see how this manifests in your own world, but I think definitely re-looking over your finances, re-looking over your job, the work that you do in the world, how do you make money? How is money coming into your life? Definitely, if you're doing something in the world where the government is attached to how you get money, whether this be that you're working, you have um, maybe social security, disability, any of these things, I think it is worth taking a relook over to make sure that the value of everything is as high as it needs to be, okay? And of course, relooking over special skills and talents that you have, right? So it's going to be a busy time, but I think really looking at the self-esteem is what's going on. And I think that because this is a time lever for you where it's not only birthday time, but it's just a new season. You're coming out differently than you have been in this last few seasons. So let's jump in here and break it down and talk about this, okay? Right at the beginning of the month here on the 5th, we've got Venus taking that retrograde in Scorpio up there in the second house. Don't be surprised if you need more quiet time, you need more privacy. That's totally fine. Take it and evaluate the second house space, okay? On the 8th, we've got a new moon happening in your sign in Libra, a new moon in your sign. At the new moon, we plant the seeds of intention for what we want. What do you want for this next birthday year, right? This is your annual beginning. This is actually your fresh start. The sun and the moon are in conjunction they're together so it means anything is possible use that big fat imagination that you may or may not have develop it okay and imagine anything you want over this next year because all you have to do is imagine it in order to start moving towards it remember a chair was just an imagination before it became all these different kind of chairs that we have, right? Same is true for you. Now, the other thing, you are the sign of balance. So with you, within you, how you're putting yourself out into the world, the first house is a very visible house. It's how we represent ourselves. Where do you need more harmony? 
Where is your equilibrium not, not balanced here? Where do you need to bring some harmony to the table? Where do you need to be aligned in relationships that have more harmony? But they would be ones that you are choosing to show up to, right? Not just conscious chosen ones you have in your life, like normal partnerships, but also who are the people you're attracting into your life? Are you letting people see you? Are you letting people meet you? Are you going out and being around different people who can help you? who can show you new things, who can take you to this other place in this next birthday year, right? So this new moon, plant those seeds of intention. What do you want the new you, the next you? It doesn't have to be a different you. If you are good with who you are, what do you just want next, right? All right, on the 10th, we've got Mercury entering into Scorpio. So Scorpio is busy, all right? So far, we're gonna have Mercury up there. We've got Jupiter up there. We've got Venus up there, and we're not done because over here on the uh, 23rd, we've also got the sun coming up there. But Mercury moves into Scorpio, and here's one of the things I want you to pay attention to. It doesn't always make you polite. Mercury in Scorpio is not always polite. It can sometimes be very direct, right? But it's looking for the truth. It's speaking the truth, and you're gonna speak the truth. You're gonna make decisions around the truth. You're gonna see the details. You're going to be thinking about the truth around this second house area, your self-esteem. Libra, let me ask you something. From where you were six months ago, are you showing up different in your life, right? It is an actual tendency of Libra energy because it is this relationship energy to people please. Are you people pleasing still? Ask that about the relationships that you're in. And if you have seen yourself from six months ago to today, outgrow that, celebrate. Celebrate, but Mercury here is helping you get to the truth and you're speaking well of it. You're speaking passionately about it. Here's the other business that I just want to point out. As we get over here to the 23rd and the sun moves up there into Scorpio as well, where the sun is at, we want light, heat, life, and vitality. What movement? We want to be seen here, right? So you're going to have this energy where it means you are trying to transform this area of your life. You are willing to allow the second house, your esteem, your talents, how you make money, um, your values, your possessions, your actual budget. You're allowing these to look different and it is absolutely gorgeous because it brings new life to the table. You've got Mercury over there speaking positivity. Jupiter is also direct, so he's bringing opportunity and Venus is showing you which things don't hold value anymore, so let's let these go. I like it. I'm really excited if you can't tell. Okay, on the 24th, we've got a full moon happening over there in Taurus, another Venetian ruled sign or Venus ruled sign, I guess I should say. <laughs> this is going to light up your eighth house space. So again, we've got finances on the table, right? Now the full moon says that something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So here, you could definitely see a joint resource in your life looking different because, you know, let's just say you've been doing all this re-looking over your second house. Ooh, this just came to me. This is for somebody. You could be coming to the end of or you're settling um, payments around a relationship. So to me, I think of divorce here. Maybe you were going through a divorce and you had to pay out all kinds of money. We get here at this full moon and maybe you're ready to settle on that. And you see where you're going to stop giving money to the person that you were with or the agency, whatever it is, right? There could be a drying up or a changing or an ending of needing to share a resource with someone. That's very good. If that's you, please keep me posted in the comment section down below. Now, that said, because this full moon is going to bring a shift, you could be. You could be ending a relationship with some kind of organization where you have joint finances. And that does include a partner or a spouse or something like that. It could even be a business partner, right? So there's going to be a shift or a change. Now, the other thing that I think of here is that perhaps, um, let's say you're a YouTuber, you have a sponsorship or a contract or something like that in, but because it's ending, it's leaving room for a fresh start. There could be somebody who's ready and getting ready to invest in you or you need to adjust how you're putting your talent out there, how you're putting you out there so that you can have people be ready to invest in you. So let's look at how you're putting that image out there. Where's the value? Where's the value, right? All right, when we get to the 26th, the Sun and Venus are both up in Scorpio, but on the 26th, they're going to be in conjunction with each other. So holding hands, working together. One is direct, one is retrograde. So what this tells me is that your social groups are going to take a shift. I'm telling you, 
your self-esteem and the way you make money, something around that value question is going to bring your social groups to a shift. And it's almost like you get your new cast of characters in the new season of your life, right? Sometimes these characters got to go away. Sometimes the main character, you, gets a haircut or you change your look or something. And then you get the cast of characters you need to be traveling with for that time. And that's definitely something that I see here. Now, as we get ready to round out and end this month on the 31st, not only is it Halloween, if you celebrate that where you are, woohoo, I do. Um, we've got Mercury leaving Scorpio, entering into the sign of Sagittarius, so now lighting up your third house space. Mercury in Sagittarius is very open-minded. It's very optimistic, so it helps your conversation. Here in the third house, you're thinking of these possibilities. You're thinking of these plans. You're willing to go network differently and talk to people about you, your brand, who you are, this idea that you've got going on, maybe even contracts that you've got going on. Mercury in um, Sagittarius is also very good for buying and selling things, especially anything related to transportation. I think of contract negotiations because Mercury is on here. So pay attention to those opportunities as well, but whatever it is, you appear to be approaching it very optimistically. It's a good opportunity, okay? You could just also be speaking truth into your life. I already told you about speaking truth before. Sagittarius will definitely speak the truth, usually very abruptly. <laughs> also on the 31st, we've got Venus moving out of her retrograde in Scorpio. Now she's going to move this retrograde on the road into your sign. So I'm telling you, you're going to be doing a re-evaluation of you, your products, your brands, the, thing, the things that you are putting out and sharing to the world and letting people see of you or the perception you're giving to people, right? Because here's the thing, you can have fame and popularity and be making zero money. Is that, are you portraying something that you don't have? Let's look at the honesty of that. Venus is flipping you around. What's the value of what you're showing people? I think that's a wonderful question. Now I will say this before I wrap up this video. Of course, Venus retrograde being over romance and finance finance, she could bring back things from the past, like past lovers, past romantic situations. You're having to relook at, maybe you're relooking at a contract off of a, a, a split that you went through and you're having to reevaluate if that's the right thing, right? You could have a job or an opportunity or a way to make money coming back to you. Maybe it's something from even when you were younger and you're like, oh my gosh, how did I forget that I'm an amazing painter, artist, beautician, Fill in the blank, okay? And you have an opportunity again. So Venus retrograde is going to be an interesting time, but I will tell you what I also know from firsthand experience. As a Taurus, when my ruling planet goes retrograde, I feel like my mojo is missing. So Libra, if this month doesn't feel like it's like high speed and you're just moving and grooving along, making things happen, that's okay. Over the next few weeks, mostly I think through... The heavy side of November, you feel it a bit more intensely because it is in your sign. But over the next six weeks, if you feel like your mojo is missing a little bit, don't worry too much about it. You're going to come back online, I assure you, okay? All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. If you haven't taken advantage of the 2018 holiday gift, make sure you click in the description box down below and grab your spots. I think appointments are only open now for December and January, so make sure you check it out, okay? I love you guys so much, and I look forward to seeing you next month. Bye!